Hello again. I hope you're having a good day. I certainly am. Today's lesson is a little bit of prep work for the lessons to come up. So we need to talk about what powers of 10 are, refresh our memories about what exponential expressions are, what's an exponent, what's a base, what sort of place values we have, and then we're going to use all of that knowledge together to write different powers of 10 and to write numbers that have one non-zero digit and a bunch of other zero digits using powers of 10. So let's get started. Grab your calculator and your guided student notes. Here we go. So the first thing we want to do is review vocabulary a little bit and remind ourselves what an exponent is. And you'll remember that an exponent is something that we write as a superscript, a small number a little bit raised up. And what this exponent does is it tells us the number of factors of the base that we need to have. For example, if we had 3 to the 4th power, we would need 4 factors of 3. And you've seen this before. Let's check this out on our calculator. We have 3. If we wanted to raise that to the 4th power, we would use our exponent key over here. See how it raises up a little bit? It becomes sort of small. 3 to the 4th power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 again, otherwise known as 9 times 9, which is 81. We did this a long time ago. If the exponent is positive, which so far those are the only types of exponents we've seen, we're going to multiply the factors as usual. But it is possible to have a negative exponent. This is new, so let's talk about that for a second. If the exponent is negative, we are still going to multiply the appropriate number of factors, but we're going to do this in the denominator. So let's say, for example, we had 5 raised to the negative 2 power. Now imagine this for a second. 5 times 5 is 25. So now we're going to put the 5 times 5 in the denominator of a fraction. We should end up with 1 25th. There we go. That's how a negative exponent works. It just tells you that you want to put the appropriate number of factors in the denominator. Now the base is the same as it always was. The base is the number that's being repeatedly multiplied. And a power of 10 is an exponential expression that just has 10 as the base. So in this lesson we're going to be focusing on 10 raised to some power. And this is important because we use a base 10 number system. And what this means for us is that every place value can be represented as a power of 10. Let's see, uh, slide down here, give ourselves a little bit of space. Let's try writing 1 million a number of different ways. So we already have it in written form. As a whole number, that would be 1 million. A 1 followed by 6 zeros. If we wanted this in factored form, and we're going to use 10 because 10 is our base, we would have 10 times 10 times 10. Is that enough? Probably not. Right now, we don't really know too much about powers of 10. So we'll test it out. And that's not a million. So we need a few more powers of 10. 
times 10 times 10 times 10. And of course that would be 10 to the sixth power. So if that's wrong, I'm gonna erase that six, but let's just see what we have. 10 raised to the sixth power. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. There we go, a power of 10, 10 to the sixth. So one million is the same as 10 to the sixth power. Give this one a try on your own. It's kind of sneaky, but I bet you can figure it out. We want to write the number 10 as a whole number in factored form and as a power of 10. Give it a shot, come back when you're done. All right, let's see how you did. Certainly as a whole number, 10 looks like 10. And if we were talking about using multiple factors of 10, we would only need one of them. So a factored form isn't gonna change at all. But the question is, what power should we use on the 10? Well, we had one of those 10s in factored form. And of course we can check this with our calculator. 10 raised to the first power is 10. There you go. So it seems a little suspicious when we're writing it down, but the calculator tells us that we are correct. If you flip to the other page, there we go. There's a nice table here that shows all sorts of powers of 10 for the first uh, nine place values. You should probably know these. When you see a power of 10, that uses three as the exponent, that should immediately tell your brain thousand. If you see a power of 10 that has six as the exponent, that should immediately tell your brain million. There are a couple of things that you should notice about this table. The first is that all of these place value names are bigger than one. Well, except for the first one. This one's kind of interesting. 10 to the zero power is one. You'd think it might be zero, but it's not. You can even check that one on your calculator as well. 10 to the zero power is one. At any rate, all of the others have place value names that are greater than one. And you'll also notice that the exponents increase. Every single one of these exponents is positive. The other thing is that the exponent on the 10 matches the number of places between the decimal point and the right hand side of the one. And this is really important because it looks like we're counting zeros. Let's go up on a thousand here. There would be three places between the right hand side of the one and the decimal point. We are not counting zeros and we'll see that soon enough. So don't even get sucked into that idea. That exponent is not counting zeros. Let's write that down. We'll even highlight the word not. It's highlighted in pink. Seems like a good color for today. That exponent is not counting zeros. All right, um, a little while ago we said that every place value can be represented as a power of 10. And this includes decimal place values as well. So let's try some of those. We would like to write one hundredth as a decimal, a fraction, and a power of 10. Now there's a table here at the bottom of your page, but try not to look at it. Let's just think about what the words are telling us. One hundredth. That's one over one hundred. As a decimal, we know that this is 0 0.01. As a power of 10, well, we kind of need to see the factors. So let's go back to what we know about a hundred. One hundred is 10 times 10. And those tens are sitting in the denominator. And so that means one 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 hundredth is 10 to the negative two power. And let's check that on our calculator. 10 raised to the negative two power. There we go, one over 100. So in your uh, handout, inside that box, you want to put in something like this, there, 0 0.01 is equal to 1 over 100, that's 1 over 10 squared, which is 10 to the minus 2 power. All right, 
Now, I know that your stuff is on the next page, but I get the luxury of being able to see parts of two pages at once. So maybe you want to use what I have just a little bit. At least I can see a little bit of this. So we'll look at the bottom part of my table here. And there are a couple of things that we want to notice. The first is that all of these are place value names that represent fractions. They're things that are between 0 and 1. And each one of these has, I'll highlight it here, a negative exponent. So when we have very, very small numbers, we expect the exponent on the 10 to be negative. Once we get numbers bigger than 1, we expect the exponent on the 10 to be positive. The other thing is that the exponent on the 10 still matches the number of places between the decimal point and the right-hand side of the 1. So let's come over here to 1 10,000th. From the decimal point to the right-hand side of the 1, you'll notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces and that's where the negative 4 is. So we're not counting numbers of zeros. In the next lesson, we'll be dealing with numbers that don't have very many zeros in them, or I shouldn't say that, they will have more non-zero digits in them, and so then we really can't count zeros. So don't get into that habit now. And the other thing that we want to notice is that the exponents on the 10, when we have related place value names, are opposites. And now I have to slide down a little bit. But you know already that 100 is 10 to the second power. And we just did 1 hundredth, that's 10 to the minus 2 power. So these things go together. They're related, just like you'd expect that they were. All right, let's slide on down and see what else we can do. We would like to write 1 ten thousandth as a decimal, a fraction, and a power of 10. This is like the example we did on the previous page, but now you have that chart all covered up. So try not to look at it, pause your recording, and come back to see me when you are done. Hopefully your fraction and your decimal look like that. And then maybe you needed to rewrite your fraction so that you could see the powers of 10 in the denominator. 10 times 10 times 10, times 10 again. 1 ten thousandth is 10 to the negative 4. Hopefully, you went over here to the decimal and you counted these spaces. And that told you that you wanted the exponent of negative 4 in a more efficient manner than writing out all the tens in the denominator. OK, so why are we doing this? Well, we're going to be dealing with some really large numbers and some really, really small numbers, things that have a lot of different decimal places in them. You can imagine it would be really easy for somebody to make a mistake when they were copying the numbers down. Not hard to miss a zero or not count a zero. Um, large numbers like the ones that we see down here, we at least have commas to separate the digits. But with decimals, we don't even have that, and it gets really difficult. So when the potential for error is so high, it's a lot better if we use a power of 10, and that way nobody gets all mixed up. So let's see what we have going here. In example 5, we would like to write 8,000, and oh my gosh, what is this one? Ones, thousands, millions, billions. This is 30 trillion. OK, ah, I'm going to leave that one for you to do. So here's our idea. We want to read this one first. We have 8. So clearly 8,000 doesn't equal 8. I was just leaving space to fill this in. 8,000, which really means we have 8 multiplied by 1,000. And now you should already know that 1,000 is 10 to the third power. And so this is the type of answer that we're looking for for this kind of question. All right. So this one is 30 trillion. In other words, that is 3, and this space way over here on the left is the 10 trillions place. So if we had 3 10 trillions, we would have 30 trillion. And maybe you knew that it was the 10 trillions place. Maybe you didn't. That doesn't really matter. What matters is that we can take this as 3 
and multiply it by something with a bunch of zeros. So your job is to fill in the necessary zeros here and then rewrite that as a power of 10. Pause the recording, give it a shot, and come back when you're done. Hopefully it looked like that. We have a three times a one followed by 13 zeros. And it was pretty tedious to count all those zeros, wasn't it? Now you can see why well, maybe writing something like 3 times 10 to the 13th power is a little nicer and keeps people from making the mistake of miscounting when they're dealing with all of, a zero, all of those zeros. All right, so let's just fill in these blanks here. 8,000 is 8 times 10 to the third power. And 30 trillion is 3 times 10 to the 13th power. And I know, you're asking me, like, when am I ever going to deal with 10 trillions? I hope you have to deal with 10 trillions. I hope your business is so successful that you have 10 trillions of dollars floating around. Huh. But if nothing else, we have um, all sorts of amps and microamps and joules and millijoules and all sorts of different types of units that you could have a whole bunch of teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. Very large numbers and very, very small numbers are a lot more common than you might think. All right, a little bit more. Let's slide onto the back page here. Same idea. We want to write both of these numbers using powers of 10. Oh my. Okay, so let's see what we have here. This is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths. This is trillionths. This is two trillionths. Okay. Not a big deal if you didn't know that place value. What's important is that we can say this is two times decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros and a one. If we multiplied those two together, we'd get that number. What power of 10 is that second factor? Two times, well, let's use those rules and count spaces. All the way over to here, we had eight zeros and a one. That gives us nine spaces. So this is two times 10, nine for the nine spaces, but not, not two times 10 to the ninth power. This is a tiny, tiny number. This is negative nine. All right, so I did the really long one, two times 10 to the negative ninth power. It is your job to do the next one. Pause the recording, come back when you are done. If you were looking for the name of the place value, this should be nine millionths. And if you went back and looked at some of those uh, charts that we had before, hopefully you already know that this is going to have a negative six in the exponent because nine million would have a positive six in the exponent on the 10. All right, let's do this officially though. This is nine multiplied by a decimal point, one, two, three, four, five zeros and a one. Nine times, and we need the power of 10. We're going to count some spaces here. Five zeros and a one is six spaces, but this is something between zero and one, so we need 10 to the negative sixth power. All right, so nine millionths is nine times 10 to the negative sixth power. This is a teeny tiny number. We expect the exponent to be negative. This one also a teeny tiny number we expect the exponent to be negative. Notice that this one is much smaller, so the exponent is, um, well, for lack of a better word, more negative. And if we slide back up to the one we did before this, we had those really large numbers, and the exponent, of course, was positive. So we're always counting spaces, but if we have a tiny decimal, we expect the exponent to be negative, and if we have a large number, we expect the exponent to be positive. All right, and that's about it. So you give your homework a shot, and we will see you in the next lesson where we'll put this knowledge to work. So make sure you really have this one down pat, because we're going to make a lot of use of this information. Have a great day.